I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the Cisco Certification 5-Minute Video Practice Exam, where today we're going to take a look at Cisco switch behavior and some Layer 2 features as well. If this is the first time you've taken one of these 5-Minute Practice Exams, I want to let you know we go through the questions at a pretty good clip, so if you want to pause the video for a moment or two while you think about your answer, that's perfectly fine because that leaves us plenty of time at the end of the video to go through the answers to these questions on live Cisco routers and switches wherever possible. And today it's going to be quite possible. I want to remind you to head out to our blog, thebryantadvantage.blogspot.com. Free practice exams, videos, fully illustrated tutorials, webinar invitations, free webinar invitations, and information about our upcoming on-demand webinar service as well. So we'll see you there. Let's jump into question one. Name and briefly describe the modes that are available to us in port security on a Cisco switch. Question two, a switch port has gone into error disabled state. What two things do you need to do to resolve that situation? If you've been to one of my free Ether Channel webinars, you've seen this. What two things do you need to do to resolve that situation? Question three, what command will allow you to see only the non-static layer two addresses that a Cisco switch has learned? And that's not a trivia question. That's going to come in handy in the real world too, and I'll show you why in just a moment. And question four, if you want to see the IP address of the routers connected to a Cisco switch, what command will allow you to do so? And those are the questions for today. Let's hop back to question one. I've actually put this up on the whiteboard. I'll bring that up in a moment. Name and briefly describe the modes that are available in port security. We're looking at shutdown, protect, and restrict. And in protect mode, the frames with the non-secure MAC addresses are going to be dropped. There's no notification, however, and the port will continue to switch frames for the secure MAC address. In restrict mode, the same actions are taken and there's also a syslog message logged. And our default mode for port security is shutdown mode and the interface goes into error disabled state. The port LED goes out, a syslog message is logged and that port has to be manually reopened. Again, that is the default port security mode. And that kind of leads us into question two. What do you need to do when a port goes into error disabled state? Now port security is far from the only way that that can happen to a port. And again, those of you who have been to my live Ether Channel webinars, you've seen that in action. You know how in the real world we can end up with an error disabled state when we're building an Ether Channel, even when we do everything right. What you've got to do first off, of course, is just resolve whatever situation made the port go into that state in the first place. You just have to fix the issue, but then as we mentioned in the answer to question one, you've got to shut that port down and then manually reopen it. Keep in mind that by default, your Cisco router interfaces are closed, but your switch ports are open. So that's all you need to do. Now what command is going to let you see only the non-static L2 addresses? on a Cisco switch and more uh, importantly perhaps why do I care? Well let's take a look we're on one of my switches here in a pod and this is a pretty small MAC address table this is not the full command for what I am uh, asked you because you'll notice when you run this particular command you're going to get the static and dynamic entries well on say a 48 port switch where every port's in use a 64 port and 80 port switch where every port is in use maybe you want to filter which entries you're looking at maybe you just want to look at those dynamic entries and one of the options here is indeed dynamic at the end of show MAC address table you've got the dynamic option there and you'll notice that shows you only the dynamic entries and those filters really do come in handy. That's why I said that's not just some trivia question. That's the kind of thing you really need to know for real world networking as well. And let's check out uh, question four. Really important that you know how to do this for the real world as well. If you want to see the IP address of the routers that are connected to a switch, what command lets you do so? Well, you're probably familiar with this command, if I can type it. 
Show CDP neighbor Cisco Discovery Protocol gives us information on directly connected Cisco devices. Now there's a lot of great information here and you definitely need to be familiar with this for your CCNA and CCMP exams. But one thing you won't see in here is the IP address of a directly connected router. And you can see in this one we've got an R2 here that I set up as router 2. It shows you the local switch port that it's connected to your whole time, the capability of the device, and you can see that it is a router, capital R. It's even going to show you what platform it is. It's a frame relay switch as well, so I'm using a 2520. And, the and actually the port on the remote device, but it doesn't show you anything about the IP address. And what you want to use here is detail. Sorry about the little bit of jitter there. But there's a lot of information here, and it's my experience in Cisco that when you put the word detail on the end of a command, you're usually going to get too much detail. But this is really handy, because one thing that show CDP neighbor detail shows you that the regular command does not, it shows you the IP address of that directly connected Cisco device. So that's really quite helpful when either you've got a questionable network map that you're working with or you're actually building a network map of your own. I want to thank you for taking a couple of minutes out of your time to watch this video. Also if you're on YouTube or any of the other many video sharing sites that we're on, we've got over 80 free videos now for you to watch and a lot more on the way. Again, I invite you out to the blog, the Bryant Event blogspot.com videos tutorials free webinars and all kinds of great stuff coming up there thanks again for watching i'm cc i'm chris bryant ccie number 12933